<laughs> oh, your t-shirt. Oh yes. Okay, this is my friend's. You show her your shirt. My this is my um, best friend Lauren, who got me into Winona in the first place and part-time <laughs> producer. So we are like the biggest Winona fans. Huge so. fan though. <laughs> oh my god, that makes me so happy. I know. So thank you. That's for my favorite t-shirt too. Is this one? This one? Yeah, it's I have so that one. Cute, right? And so it's, and it was it was fan made. Was it fan made? Yeah. So cute. Yep. And, well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. I have so many questions. I've watched your episode three twice, your directorial episode. She, Lauren watched it too. We absolutely loved it. My fave parts were not today, Satan. <laughs> I love that so much. I don't want to get into too many spoilers, obviously, for the fans, but I loved like the lighting in the vampire monster bar. I thought that was just like so gorgeous with Tim. Um, um, and I loved Waverly, like the lawyer scene is like so yeah. cute. Um, so congrats on it because it was like literally such a great episode. Um, well, so I know that you guys filmed out of order and episode three was actually the first episode that you shot when you came back from this two year hiatus. So just talk to me about what that was like being the director filming for the first time after not filming for two years. Uh, I hadn't actually thought of that until you said it. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that before I started shooting because that would have freaked me out. Yeah. Um, well, I think we I was just so happy to be back. And um, I, I guess because, too, like, we have these amazing fan interactions. We, we do all these conventions and Comic-Con. And um, so it's not just, like, a normal... Um, TV show where you kind of do it and then you go do other things and you forget about it. Like, we don't forget about this. Like, it's yes. kind of become like <laughs> um, really a part of our bodies, I think. So, for going back, it, it didn't feel like I, I felt like I knew it better than ever, really. Um, I think the challenge for me was. Um, because there are changes in purgatory, um, <laughs> it's it's sort of setting up this new purgatory, setting up a new, for me, the challenge was like the new location, like what you just talked about. I'm not sure how, how much I'm allowed to say, right? When is this airing? Well, <laughs> so I am going to do like a full thing for YouTube. So if any other, if you want to do a spoiler conversation, I can always put that later and next week but like i'll do like non-spoilery stuff for for airing like on saturday prior oh copy okay so, <laughs> so basically yeah setting, i was setting up a lot of new things within purgatory yeah. and um so for me it was like uh i think that was the challenge but but i think <laughs> um knowing the story as well as i did it felt um I felt like I had a good grasp on the world we were in so that I could set up new things. Was it weird, like, directing your friends? Like, or did they just, I mean, Kat said that you said nothing but amazing things about you when I spoke with her, said that you were phenomenal, made everyone feel so comfortable. But as you, like, coming in there directing and directing, like, your own character, was it just, like, a different vibe on set? Like, were you, like, even more nervous? Or did you just kind of, like, go with the flow? Um... I was, I was always nervous. I had, Kat taught me a new word. It's called anxiarrhea. When you have diarrhea from anxiety. Yes. I had that. I had that. Um, every day. It was bad. I, was like, I think I've lost weight. Like, I am so nervous all the time. Oh um, but, um, but it was nobody else. It was more just, like, watching the clock. And, I like, as an actor, you don't realize, like, when you're behind in the day what you don't really think about it as a director you're like oh I'm in so much trouble oh wow that's an interesting point so you were actually thinking more about like the timing and getting through like all the scenes versus just being an actor and like doing your wine notice scenes. you were actually thinking of how we have to keep things on time yeah you our show about is that we don't do overtime like yeah. we <laughs> Um, we don't have time, we don't have the budget. And so, and we have a lot to cover in our show. And so yeah. for me, it was like staying on time um, and, and getting everything we needed was, um, was, was the scariest part for me. Directing my friends was for my friends for a reason. So like <laughs> <laughs> um, that part was fine. Directing new characters, that was 
where I wanted to be really careful because I wanted to uh, not shut them down. Like I, I didn't want to, um, you know, have new people on the show and like say something that would then like confuse them or, uh, but no, it was, yeah, the hardest part for me was definitely the race against the clock. We have a tough show. Yeah, no, you guys have so much going on. Um, I love how wine, I mean, I love, there's so many things I love about the show. It's one of my favorite shows, like, of all time. Um, there's so many things I love about it. One of the things is that how throughout the, the last three seasons, and including this season, they always use, like, practical effects for monsters versus a ton of CGI. I don't want to get into too many spoilers, but there's a big monster in episode three, your episode, and I love, how did you did you have any input into developing like the monster and what they're going to look like? Um, I know there's also, I mean, pretty much every episode, the monsters are practical with makeup and costuming. Um, and I love that they don't use a ton of CGI, but I'm just curious for you as a, being a director, what kind of input you had in regards to making the monster what it is? <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, that that was a definitely a team effort, but I was part of the team. Um, <laughs> that the effort, um, yeah. I think um, that one again, without giving too much away, I will say that um, I don't know how much detail we really see of monster, and that's okay. Like we didn't, we never really wanted to see too much because it wasn't really about. The, that it, it, it made sense for this particular instance not to do too much yeah like <laughs> um <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> um no but this monster wasn't uh you know the effect wasn't it wasn't meant to be particularly scary yes <laughs> not giving too much away uh Anyway, and so, but yeah, part of it was like, I think the, I, ironically what, what really clicked for developing that monster, um, Shelly Scarrow, one of the writers and I, um, we had this moment during the concept, or during the monster meeting, mm -hmm. where we were like, you know, I, I said something like, I have this type of eczema and it like, pustules and then you could hear her over the phone and she's like oh my god that's the monster that's the detail we need for the monster i have that too and so like we freaked out because we had both had the same kind of eczema so we knew exactly what we meant everybody else was like i have questions i have so many questions and we but shelly and i were like yeah okay now <laughs> we know what this monster is oh my like, god it's like we, every time, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I'm um, like, in kind of building off that, like another thing, you know, that I love about the show is how, you know, you guys as the actors and the writers, and of course, Emily just like play into the fandom and the fandom is so important even to the story. So I'm kind of wondering, do you, do you keep in mind the fandom when you guys are filming on set and how so, especially like when you were a director too? Well, I think, I, I'm sure everybody has a different answer for this. And I think the writing is separate from, of course, from the acting. So like, I think a lot of the, the nods come from the writing. And then as actors, you just kind of, you don't want to play it too much because mm -hmm. the characters in this world are just living in this world. So generally, <laughs> I tried to, um, you know, I don't want to play a character of the character. I want to kind of try to live with Winona. Yeah. And so I, tr I try not to think about social media and all that. Like, I just try to get back into, like, who she is. But it's hard. Like, you can't help but picture the gifts and, like... <laughs> I love it. No, I... Why Clona was one of my favorite moments this season. I was like, when I saw the episode, I was like, I can't wait for all the Why Clona gifs of you, like just <laughs> saying it, like on Twitter and stuff. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I know that Tim has said, you know, putting on Doc's hat has helped him get back into character. When I talked with Kat, she said it was, of course, dyeing her red hair. So I'm curious for you, is there a certain prop or costume piece that helps you get back into Winona's character? I know there's so many different things. I know you have like hair extensions 
brushes and her jacket and the nail polish and of course you have peacemaker but is there anything specifically for you melanie that helps you really get back into winona once you like pick it up or put it on or anything like that weirdly um my the gun belt oh yeah like that, I was, that's iconic yeah and <laughs> it's something that i i kind of overlook a lot but we had a, a gallery shoot the other day and anyway i was i was wearing the wardrobe but the second i was like yeah okay but then the second i put on that gun belt i'm like all right we're here we're here yes, yes. so i think the gun belt has a a big I mean it sort of goes with Peacemaker but it's its own thing like sometimes Peacemaker's in my boot sometimes I'm holding it but that the gun belt is always right there I love the montage in episode one where like you're getting everything and then like there's a little break where you're picking up the flask and you like sip it and there's a break in the music it was so fun and so cute I was like I was like I feel like she must have enjoyed this so much getting back and doing that scene I know it was filmed again out of order but I love that sequence of you getting back into um getting back into Wy Winona um so I think that Winona oh, had I yeah what actually because you just brought that up oh the other thing that helps me get into Winona is Paolo Barsman, who directed that. He's oh. the most, um, I mean, he was, he directed the pilot. He helped yeah. develop the concepts uh, within the show and the way we shoot it. And yes. a lot of the Winona stuff comes from him. So whenever he's there, um, uh, that's another element that you, I can't wear them, but I've got them. He helps me get back into it. Got it. Um, so Winona Earp has the two of the greatest TV ships of all time. I'm obsessed with Wine Doc. I'm obsessed with Way Hot. What can we expect more from Wine Doc this season? I know you can't get into too many spoilers, but I'm curious, what else can we see from Winona and Doc and their relationship progressing in the season? Because I can't wait. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, um, <laughs> You're like, what can I say? <laughs> definite evolution. Uh, mm -hmm. Doc and Winona. Uh, <laughs> are evolving in the way that they want to deal with the world. And so um, we don't always, it doesn't always, I, we don't always evolve in the same ways. Yes. And that causes complications. Yeah. So, I mean, I know, and I know you've like touched on this before, but I mean, are you really hoping that they're going to be end game? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's me. Yes, uh, like yes. A hopeless romantic, and Emily. Uh, I I don't know what. Yeah, I know. Okay, no, I was just curious to say. I mean, so I mean, obviously, in episode two, I think half of the fandom was just. I mean, not even half. Like pretty much every single fan flipped out, including you know me after I had seen it. And I, I had seen it before I had spoke to Kat, so I wasn't able to talk about any spoilers with her. But I'm curious for you when you guys are at the table read and like reading this episode and then just also seeing all these amazing positive you know like fan reactions afterward what was just like your reaction to that scene because it was like one of the most beautiful like tv romance scenes i've ever seen from any couple in like tv history and the fact that they just like did it so beautifully i'm just honestly curious for you melanie what, what it was like for you to like actually see the episode once it was finished oh um well, it, like, it's always so fun for me to see stuff, the parts that I'm not in. Right. Like, there's so many things that you picture when you read the script, and then um, to see the way they do it. And also, because you're not in it, you forget. You forget. Yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> that they, because you weren't there when they shot it. And so um, it's really fun to see watch the stuff you're in but you kind of know that stuff already you know like you were there I yeah. you know um so, <laughs> it, so yeah it's really um it's always a trip to watch the whole thing together and how each storyline um on its own it it's almost like 
heartbreaking to watch such a beautiful relationship yeah. unfold because then on the other side of that is that there's another one that's um not <laughs> doing that and so but I, I love how there's like the symbiotic relationship between all the characters so that you're so happy for some characters over here and then you go oh but that really shows a stark contrast to the these characters over here like it's all kind of like this beautiful organism that works together but yeah watching the the fans um reactions is just always so gratifying and and it's, it sort of gets you through the hard days where you're like the conditions are tough or like right now we're, we're wearing masks and it's yeah. hot and you know and you just sort of that is one way you get yourself through is go you just sort of imagine like people are gonna love this just get through it because it means so much to people I mean, I was actually thinking, so I mean, like, is it, is it different being in Calgary now that it's like warmer out versus the freezing cold? Yes. Yeah. Is it like so weird? Because <laughs> I'm just, I mean, yeah. What'd you say? It, it's so weird. Like we're yeah. going, we're just even on, on our days off, it's just like, oh, I can go out for a walk. <laughs> like, <laughs> so weird. But um, it's, I, I think it's like, we're not even really appreciate appreciating how great it is to be here in the summer because now we have the added weirdness of having to wear a mask right um and so we're just we're all trying to get used to that because there's a lot of rules and we're all trying to like um navigate this new world that we're trying to shoot in um and so yeah, there there are things that we're definitely we could be appreciating more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was on yeah, I was honestly just curious because I know you guys are always like freezing. I mean, I'm sure you were freezing in those garden sequences, you know, for episodes one and two. And I was it, was it horrible? Horrible. I think those were some of the coldest days we've ever had. Oh my gosh. Wide open and um we were not dressed in a lot, you know, like I had all cropped up. Um is Winona so, ever dressed in a lot? <laughs> I, I love this is the best one of my favorite outfits, by the way. Gun belt. There's the gun belt. Yes. Uh, I know, it's so cute, it's even on here. Um yeah. yes, no, it's like I feel like you're always probably freezing on set. I was honestly just curious. Um so I know that like, you know, Emily obviously moved, or not maybe Emily, but sci-fi just in general moved you guys to the 10 p.m. slot. And I know there's gonna be maybe some more like F bombs. Is there gonna be like some more, you know, like semi R-rated content. What can you say about in regards to how the content is going to be different? Are we going to see like some R-rated sex scenes for Wine Doc? <laughs> I can't even keep the straight face. <laughs> um, honestly, I have noticed a lot of swearing. Yes. Um, which I can get behind. I'm cool with it. Thing. But, um, <laughs> I, I don't, um, I, honestly, I, it doesn't feel like, I always felt like we were kind of pushing anyway. 100%. Yes. So mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like, uh, that different. Except, uh, except for more F-bombs, for sure. Except for more F-bombs. Okay, got it. Um, no, I love it so much. So I love how we didn't have to wait until episode seven of this season to see some, you know, like, why not moments. And I'm curious what other type of moments we're going to get that. I love how, like, you know, the characters of, like, Winona and Nicole, they've already called each other, you know, best friends. And obviously, like, you know, it's one of my favorite parts of the show. I, I spoke with Kat and I was saying how much um, you know, Lauren and I both love, you know, the why not shipping names. So what can we expect from that relationship as the season continues on? Ooh. Um, because Nicole's going through some stuff right now. I mean, like, I've seen episodes three and four already. So I mean, like, she, Nicole's, you know, dealing with all of the things that she had to deal with on her own for the last 18 months. And we see that way on her more in episode three so i'm just curious for you know nicole they they do have a a, a a sweet hug you know in this episode but i'm curious what else we can expect from that relationship friendship <laughs> uh, well i you know they're not gonna get off each other's balls 
plague at all. <laughs> but that's the best part about the friendship. <laughs> yeah, and I think that there's a lot of really fun stuff coming up. Um, that uh, it's like um, they're each other's. They're, they don't use kitten gloves on each other, you know. Like it's just like get your shit together. I'm gonna spank you. Like let's go. <laughs> um, and um, there's there's a lot more but it's always really supportive but like there's a lot of really fun stuff coming up with that okay awesome that I'm really excited for people to see um so like I said I I love how you know the fandom is so embraced for Winona by you know you and Emily and everyone and the writers and directors um what was your favorite things to fan out about when you were growing up. Um, I mean, like, I obviously, like, I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. Like, I love Buffy and Angel. I know Twilight, like, Cruel Intentions. I have all my favorite, like, ships back here. Um, so is there anything that you personally, like, fangirled about or a TV relationship or movie relationship that you always liked watching when you were growing up? Yeah, Buffy, Buffy and Angel. Yes. Um, Go, you're Buffy. What, what do you think of Buffy and Spike? Okay, I met Spike. You did? Yeah. Okay, I've never met him. I yeah, I I've met Sarah, but like just barely at a New York Comic Con. I know. I said I'm, <laughs> I'm dying to meet you. I wish this interview was in person. <laughs> one of the, you know, well, I I told um the the one of the girls who heads up Herba Palooza. I know it's been pushed to Ohio next year, so we'll be there for that. Um, hopefully everything will be, you know, good to go by then. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love, what did you, what did you think when you, when you met I, him? <laughs> oh, it was just so weird. Cause I was like, Oh, I, I, I can't believe I'm not having a heart attack. It was like one of those <laughs> things where he was talking to me, like I'm a peer and I was like, you are, you're queen. <laughs> we're, not, we're not peers. Your spike. <laughs> you have to go over there. I can't do this. <laughs> um, I love it so much. He was so nice. He, I had a ring on, and he, I was gesturing about something, and he's just like, I just want to let you know, you have beautiful hands. That's so random and awesome. <laughs> you have beautiful hands. Okay. He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about everyone comparing, like, the Buffy and Winona similarities? I know Emily has, like, expressed how much she's loved that show. And honestly, for me, like, I don't really even need, like, a... I mean, I, of course, will take a Buffy reboot any time. But honestly, like, I Winona, this show gives me so much love of what I had with Buffy. Um, so I'm curious for you, like, what similarities, you know, that you've kind of, like, thought about Buffy and Winona in general? I haven't thought to, because to, to me, it was just like, um, I can't. I can't it's probably I'm, hard for you too, because like you're, I know you were a fan, you're a fan of the show too. It's probably hard, but like as a fan like me, who's not involved with the show like right. you, there's so many similarities, even in regards to just like the monsters and some of, just like some of the pop culture reference dialogue that is thrown in there is just so much like that, so much like Buffy. <laughs> well, yeah, and I just think, um, I just think, well, I guess just for me, it would be like, she's coming into her own, like, and finding her kind of calling, like, that for me is the similarity, but yeah, at least like you said, like, for me, <laughs> imagine in any way being similar to Buffy is, like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I can't, <laughs> it's not compute. I love it so much. I love how much of like a fangirl you are and how down to earth you are. Um, so I, I love, I got so many fan questions for you and I want to get to those in a bit. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, but I'm curious, you know, there's, there's so much drinking involved in the show where Winona's taking shots and everybody's, you know, drinking. What, what are you guys using for fake alcohol on, in, on set? And also like, in addition to that, I was just watching Ready or Not again, which is one of my favorite horror films of the past like decade. It's amazing. Um, and all of the drugs that your character does. What are you, I'm just curious. I know my, when my husband and I always talk to actors and they're drinking or doing drugs, like as the character on set, what are you guys using for for that on set in Winona specifically? Whiskey is um, like basically water and caramel color. Is it, it gross? Um, <laughs> only because you're aware that you're drinking a brown 
liquid that doesn't taste like what it's supposed to taste like. Got it. Uh, but it's not gross, but it is. Um, <laughs> but no, like if you just closed your eyes and somebody gave it to you, you'd think it was water. So it's fine. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we'll do like non-alcoholic beer, which is gross. Like I'd rather just have the caramel water. <laughs> um, sometimes like later in the season, we have some drinks that are uh, like one of them was Gatorade. Oh, okay. Um, so it's just, that's not terrible. <laughs> no, I was hydrated. <laughs> you were hydrated. <laughs> um, have you read scripts for the final episodes of the season and you haven't? No, but oh, Tim wow. has. Tim and has? I hate him. And I, I don't want, he, he's just, listen, apparently <laughs> it's so good. Are you, were, are you just not, have you just not just wanted to yet? I don't, I'm not ready. I think because we've been shooting, like we had to take such a break. It's like, we just came back. So then yeah, to read the end of the, I'm like, but I just got here. Like, I don't know. I'm not good with goodbyes of like, even if I, like, even if I was like, you're definitely coming back. Like, I don't like the part where we say bye, even for five minutes. I don't like that. Yeah. So I avoid it as much as I can. I don't uh, yeah. What is, I love, um, oh yeah, this is another thing. Um, so obviously we all want another season of Winona. Would you want to direct another episode for a potential season five? You would 100% do it? A thousand percent. Yeah. Um, having said that, directing myself blows I hate oh, it really um, my husband my husband was like I wonder like how, how she's directing herself on set are you yelling cut or do you have like an AD do that and also is there something else that you learned maybe about Winona when you are directing yourself does that make sense is there anything else that you learned about her you're, you, you're just, you, you know everything about her. You are her. <laughs> if I've learned something about her, uh, it hasn't clicked yet. No, I think, um, no, I just, no, I sometimes had an AD yell cut, like depending on what I felt like my limitations were. I, I would often have um, my photo double do the rehearsal so that I could actually watch it because I need to watch um, I just need to see it. I mean, obviously, that's what a director is supposed to do. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so I would have a photo double do it for me. She'd be in my wardrobe and she would uh, do the scene. So then I could try to just let go of, I trust the crew so much. I mean, it's been four years now. So um, yeah. we, we were good dance partners at this point. So I am able to just like say, um, okay, no, you know, watch it with the photo double and then have them do it, do the changes before I go in. And then, mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, I, I didn't, that was, it was too much of a, because you're, you know, as a, what's it called actor, mm -hmm. you're like, it's the creative brain. It's like the, it's the creative side and you're just supposed to like let everything go. And then the directing side is quite technical. Like you still want to be creative, yeah. but you're also just like, you're using another part of your brain. Yeah. And so it was just that constant shifting back and forth. I found really, uh, I just wanted to do a hundred percent of one thing. So my favorite scenes that I got to direct were when I was just in my jam jams and I was like, <laughs> looked like a mess and but I was not in in Bueno No wardrobe that was my favorite time. One of my favorite parts of the episode is um I'm not going to say anything too spoilery but the slow motion montage like where with all with yes. everybody it's I was like I was like dying I was like this is so sweet it's so good I can't wait for the fans to see it honestly. <laughs> um so Jolene is one of my favorite villains that has ever been on the show if do you I know you probably have so many favorite villains as well but is there a villain that you guys have maybe talked about like bringing back or one that you would personally want to bring back for another episode because the Jolene episode where she's like baking you guys everything is one of my favorite episodes in like the whole series. Yeah, well, Jolene is one of the people I would love to see back um, yeah. because, she, because she, just watching her as an actor, you're just like, ah, oh, like she's yeah. 
so good. Like, yeah. Um, I'm like Bobo, obviously. I, I know. You no, know, like we, we've had him back a lot, but like he's just so good too. Like he's yeah. just so um committed and just um he's like a Winona staple for me. Like, you know, and I, I feel yeah. like you have you think of him as a villain when you think of the show. Totally. Yeah. Also, it's just like the way he's just he just goes a hundred percent, like he's just never holds back. It was so good. Yeah. Um, there's so many villains. I mean, there's so many, you know, like um <laughs> Cludy was fun. <laughs> like uh she Raisa was uh she she's just nice and wacky. Yeah. And she's a mom, like she was she was a mom and she was trying to like jigsaw puzzle her kids back together <laughs> like that's crazy so I think actually now Winona and Cludy would have a lot in common yeah actually that would be really interesting um so I have a couple of fan questions here that I want to get to before I let you go um so at Artemis 1707 says Kat mentioned that Melanie pulled an amazing prank on set but wanted Mel to get the pleasure of telling everyone herself what was the prank do you know about this? I feel like she, I feel like this is her ultimate prank. I she feel did. like Kat, I didn't pull any prank <laughs> to make me tell a prank that I didn't, I think this is her prank. It's her prank. Yeah. And that's what I'm like, I'm like, maybe she just like, she's like, oh, I'll just have Melanie answer that. Cause like, she didn't want to like go into some story or something because we got, I got that a couple of times. <laughs> okay. I will say I did one. Maybe it's this. I don't know how, how ultimate it is. Maybe, okay. I, maybe I did one and I forgot, but okay. I, um, <laughs> I kept these hair extensions. Like I keep loose, I keep like pulling them out yes. and they are disgusting um but your hair looks so fab give me hair tips <laughs> get fake hair and Jody Thompson to do it um so I would take my disgusting rat hair that would come out and I would wrap it around I don't know why I felt like I needed to haze Martina but I would take her phone and like wrap my hair around it and just put it on her chair so that she would come back and find like because she's always on her phone because yeah. she's like, uh, you know? Yes. Uh, so, uh, so <laughs> what's a, is she a millennial or is she a... I don't know. She's young though. I mean, how Listen, old she's, she's young. She's on yeah. her phone all the time. Yeah. So I, was like, <laughs> so I was wrapping my hair around her phone and she'd come. And because she was new, I think this is why I'm such an asshole is because I was knew that because she's new, she wouldn't call anyone out on it. Yes. So I knew that she would just be like, and then like, and then every time she'd come back to her chair, my hair would be wrapped around her phone. <laughs> she never said anything, and it was amazing. I did it to Tim, but he knew. He knew. <laughs> I did it to Tim, but I'm like cracking up thinking of Tim texting you like spoilers, like to like upset you. But I don't. I feel like he wouldn't. He he would get too much of a smackdown. No, he's the ultimate fan. So he. Um, he reads them right when he gets them. Like he can't, it's like Christmas. Mm -hmm. so he's like, he's like, uh, I think I can say that he was like, Mal, you need to read episode 12. I was, mm -hmm. I was crying. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. What are you happy crying? Sad crying? And he was like, just read it. Oh my god. All right. Um, well, just a couple, one more for you. Um, at Cycling Astrid says, did, when you were directing, did you have like a special Melanie mark that you put into the episode that was unique to you as a director? Does that make sense? I did. I mean, I know that you have the, like the cinematographers and the directors before obviously have like set the tone and stuff for Winona, but did you, Melanie, put anything like interesting or like unique to you in episode three? Oh yeah. Um there's a there's yes. Um well I got I got to um again because we had a new set I got to work with the um, our art department. Um the set is so cool. 
Oh, it's so cool. And so I I had a lot of, a lot of input into that. And um, so, and Trevor is such a great, like, I really was, I showed him my images and I'll post them on, on his, on Instagram Uh just to show like what a great job he did with the references I gave him. Um, But like, and he was so game. Like I, a lot of people would have been like, that's, are you sure? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And he was just like, I've got it. I have this great picture of him like describing it to me. And it's like, it's hilarious. I'll post it. Um, um, he's I showing love your behind the scenes stuff that you post on your Instagram. Like the, even the last video you just posted of you like training and stuff. I'm like, Melanie's yeah. so badass. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is, uh, this one's a whole hilarious picture and I'll explain it on Twitter, but, um, <laughs> but, um there was another element to, um, to another established scene. But again, like all of these, because of what's happened, a lot of things have changed. And so I got to play with, um, I'll tell you one one story and then you can tell me if you know where that figures in the, but when I was a kid, my dad used to go to these dances, like these singles dances. Uh huh. And he would, I was, he was a single parent. So he would take me and help set up for the dance so that he wouldn't have to pay to get into the dance. So he would help set them up. So I would help set them up and then I would go play in the back during the dance. Well, he gave me these balloons to set up and there were these two um, round balloons and one long balloon. And I put them together not realizing what uh-huh. it looked like. And then the whole night, my dad would just watch people come in and be like, and start laughing. Anyway, so that, I wanted that image to be put into the episode. That is literally the perfect tease, and I am dying to see the fan shirts about that on Monday after the episode. Oh, 100%. I've seen it twice. (laughs) I love your attention to detail. (laughs) I mean, that was, like, pretty out there, but I I was actually, like, my my friend Lauren here, um, also named Lauren, is that um, she was, like, all the fandom shirts are going to be, like, like, that's going to be, like, a new fandom shirt. I was, like, it's going to be so fun. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for your time today. Honestly, this was, like, such a pleasure. Um, Before we go, I have another random movie question for you Um, in regards to the silencing. I haven't seen it Yet. I know it comes out to video on demand next weekend and I'm gonna be watching it and reviewing it can, what can you tell me about your role in that because I'm like dying to see it I, I was we were gonna go to South by Southwest and see it but now oh. it'll be video on demand honestly <laughs> they were so sad that it, uh, they were so excited for South by Southwest um, um, what can I say because I don't know anything about your care I know a little bit of what we've seen like you know about the plot and the trailers but I don't we don't know much about your character so I was just wondering what you could say about the film and your experience and since it's coming out next week (laughs) or is your character a total spoiler (laughs) probably okay man it's been so long so I will say I filmed that oh a long time ago like two years ago yeah so it was a while ago may of like yeah wow um, i will say that i never got to meet or work with annabella wallace and so i yeah did you work with hero finds to finn did you work with do you have any you did a little he was so sweet but also like incredible um i can't that like he's actually I can't wait to see the movie because I want to see what he did with that character. Yeah, no, I'm excited for it. Um, I interviewed him on set for the movie that's for a- this movie, um, After We Collided. I interviewed him about a year ago, and I've always been, like, a huge supporter of his career as well. So I was wondering, like, if you guys had any scenes together or if you just, like, saw him on set and then, like, interacted that way. Like, again, I don't know much about your character. I honestly don't remember if we had a scene together or if we were just there at the same time. Yes. <laughs> when I watch the movie, I will find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember. Okay, no, that's awesome. Well, Melanie, thank you so much. You've been so generous with your time and thank I can't you. wait for the fans to see your episode. It was so awesome. And now I'm like, now I'm like anxious about seeing the rest of the season. I'm like, what happens in episode 12? I have to talk to Tim so he can give me details. <laughs> oh, he's, he's going to be frustrating to talk to, but... <laughs> I appreciate it, Melanie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.